So question A, again, we're solving equations that involve fractions and decimals, and this one involves a decimal. Mm -hmm. So again, um, this problem's not that hard. I, you could probably just, you know, uh, manipulate this just by using the treating this as a one-step equation and using your calculator if you're not comfortable with working with decimals. Um, but you can also do this problem by removing the decimals out of the problem. So as I do this question, notice that there are, each side is already simplified. But notice how if we come down here, if decimals are present, what you can do is multiply each side by the appropriate number of tens, because when you multiply by 10, a 10 will move the decimal, because that moves that increases place value. So notice that each one of these numbers has a number by one number behind the decimal. So what I can do is multiply by a 10 and a multiply by 10 will make the decimal move over one place to the right. So when I rewrite this though, I would like to have the variable on the left side. So I'm gonna rewrite this as y plus 8.6 equals 2.4 because I re prefer just to have it look like that. Okay. What I can do now is I can multiply by 10 on each side of the equation. And by doing so, this is gonna allow me to remove decimals and maybe help me avoid using a calculator. So when I use, when I do this, I can distribute the 10 through the parentheses over here. So 10 times Y is just gonna be um, 10 Y. But when you multiply 10 times 8.6, multiplying by 10 increases place value. So this turns into an 86. Because remember, you know, 10 times 8 is 80. So it should make sense that 10 times 8.6 is 86. Similarly, you know, 10 times 2.4, the shortcut is all you have to do is move the decimal one place to the right when you multiply by 10. So it increases place value. So slide the decimal one place to the right. And that should make sense again because 10 times 2 is 20. So 10 times 2.4 should be 24. So if I look at this problem now, it doesn't look as bad. So again, to get the y by itself, to get the variable by itself, if you will, I'm, I want to get rid of this constant first. So I need to use the opposite, the zero pair. So I'm going to put a negative 86 here and here on both sides. And when I do that math, I'm going to get 10 y is going to come down. This is zeroed out. So notice how we start with 24 and, and lose 86. So we're going to be in debt quite a bit. But since the signs are different, we have to subtract. So 86 minus 24. Because when you subtract, you always got to put Again, when I'm subtracting, I'm, I'm ignoring the signs and just subtracting the numbers without the signs. The sign comes back in the problem later. So 6 minus 4 would be 2. 8 minus 2 would be 6. So what I'm doing is going to bring down to 62. But remember, I start with 24 and I'm losing 86. So this is going to push me all the way down into $62 in the hole, or six, a negative 62, if you will. So then from there, what I can do is get rid of this coefficient by dividing by 10 and dividing by 10. Now remember, if, if multiplying by 10 increases place value, division by 10 is, is going to decrease place, place value. So I'm going to lose a decimal place. So notice how decimal on a 62 is at the end. And if you divide by 10, it's going to make the decimal move one place to the left. And that's going to give me then uh, this, um, this is going to get me let's see here lost this thing for some reason so when I divide both sides by 10 the 10s are going to divide out and this should leave me then negative 6.2 as a solution again you could check it from the original problem if you add this 8.6 plus negative 6.2, does that give me a 2.4? Well, remember, if you're adding 
opposite signs, that's essentially a subtraction problem because you have a, a an increase, you have a gain, but then you're adding a loss, which means it's actually going to drop down in value. So 8.6, if you lose the 6.2, it does indeed give me this 2.4, it does check out. So it does get verified. So our solution to this problem would be negative 6.2, and again, this could also be written as a solution set. So these little set notations, if you will, negative 6.2. So again, just follow in my lab how they want that inputted. So you always got to pay attention to it. And that's where the practice comes into play is how they want the answer inputted into the computer. So practice that part as well.